So Robin Cup is a, com a, a robotics competition that's been running since 1997. Um, it travels all around the world. And it was, it was started to, as um, a fun way of encouraging researchers and students to tackle challenging problems in robotics and artificial intelligence. So that's where it started out with soccer um, because it's fun, everybody wants to play a game. But then after that, it expanded into, if you like, more practical things like rescue robots, industrial robots, at-home robots. And then we also added a junior competition to encourage school kids to get into STEM subjects. And at this international comp competition, we co-locate the junior competition with the majors so that the school kids can see where, they, where they'll end up going. So this one is a worldwide one. But of course, we have many, many junior events. There are hundreds of teams, thousands of teams around the world. Um, I probably even underestimate how many there are. And every team has several people. And of course, then there are the regional competitions like European RoboCup, like uh, RoboCup uh, Asia Pacific, and the ones in uh, Latin America, for example. So we have a very, very large community of which we see only the top uh, leagues here. Because when, when we're doing a lot of so research in the laboratory, it's very easy as an ac academic to run an experiment, publish it, somebody else runs to publish it. But here, everybody has to come to the same location on the same conditions and compete together. And you really, you have to make sure things actually work and you get a really direct comparison between a lot of things. So scientifically, it's a very good way of benchmarking um, how things, how, you, how you're going. Um, and then there's the education side, is that we're training our students who are going to go on and do these sort of things for, for, um, you know, in industry. Um, and, and outreaches are also really important. We want the public to come in see what we're doing and so they learn about robotics and what the real state of the art is about robotics rather than you know what they see in science fiction and things like that so there's a whole bunch of reasons why i think these competitions are really important the robocop community it is a competition no question it's very competitive no question but in the end it's a friendly competition so in the end of the day we sit together have a symposium discuss ideas there was one team for example this year that had an absolutely amazing uh, de technical development which everybody looked at that and now everybody's going to use and that's okay, that's exactly what we want. We're not, we're not in here just, just to win, we're here to advance the science. So for example, in the standard platform league that we compete in, um, we're, we're getting robots to play soccer, um, but we all use the same hardware and that makes it very easy at the end for us to publish the software um, and then other teams can use that. They're all exhibiting something more advanced than what's available commercially. That's the way it's supposed to be. This is the state of the science being demonstrated here. Uh, this league has v many examples of robots that started in the paddock, proved themselves in the competition, happened to win it, and then move on to the commercial world. This is the incubator for all of the robotics uh, being applied to emergency response. So companies who are forward-looking, they usually like RoboCop and they'll also like to fund it because they th think ahead. They understand that the technology that we have here is going in 5, 10, 20 years going to be an industry. Not the technology that's already an industry because that is the obvious one. Now, the point with this is that if you look at robocoppers in industry, you will find that many of them has go have gone into industry either to work there in very, very elevated positions or found their own companies. We have quite a few startups that were founded by RoboCoppers and some of them were bought by very, very big companies. One of my big things about robotics is that it requires a merging of disciplines. You need mechanical engineering because the robot needs to be able to physically perform and not fall apart. You need electronic engineering because the robot needs to sense and power and communicate. You need computer science because the robot needs to have some intelligence. You need user interfaces that are smart and so on. But you also need art, because the robot needs to be able to interact with people, it needs to operate among humans. Now, creativity spans all four of these. You need to solve problems that are unique, not just by themselves in each individual discipline, but solve problems across all four of these broad categories. The creativity required to solve these problems, to even identify the problems to solve, and to do so in a way that forms a whole working device is paramount and this is the one of the beautiful things about RoboCup Rescue is that it encourages this whole system, getting the whole system working and making it work reliably, repeatably in a statistically significant fashion. The 
RoboCup Federation has been founded as an organization to look at how to integrate robotics and artificial intelligence. When it was held, the first RoboCup competition was held in 1997, basically robotics and AI were two separate topics. It was very clear that they should belong together, but they were not actually interacting. And to push that and to understand that to get progress in intelligence, in, you need robotics and you need robotics to actually realize that intelligence doesn't just happen on abstract machines but actually in the real world. The real world is simply a much harder arbiter than any artificial scenario can cook up. So 97 it started as an initiative to say in 2050 we will have humanity robots playing football and winning against the world champion. Now, the point is, why football? Two things. First of all, football, everybody understands the rules. Second, it's very hard. Not for humans, but for robots. If you look at chess, chess is an abstract game, and people for a long time thought it was actually the pinnacle of intelligence, if you can beat it. But 1997 already, Kasparov, the then strongest players, player in the world, was beaten by Deep Blue. Maybe he had a bad day, but the factor was, the primacy of human intelligence in chess was broken then. This was a year when Robocop was first held. And so the new generation of challenges has started. The point is that robotics for a long time was um, very limited field. People did not realize very complicated things because this was very difficult. So by setting an extremely difficult task, such as playing football with humanoid robots, we have basically completely changed the landscape of what we believe is possible in robotics. At that time, today doesn't look quite as impossible. It looks very difficult still, but uh, at that time it looked as completely impossible and unachievable task. The AI technology is developing quite quickly. So, uh, you know, sometimes I think the dialogue is a little bit focused on the, on the dangers of AI and, and so on. Um, and certainly there are areas, uh, autonomous weapons and so on, where I think um, you know, there are, there are dangers there. Um, and I think there needs to be a lot of dialogue and we're not at the stage of having that dialogue just yet. We're starting to have that dialogue and we're starting to look at, um, you know, ethics frameworks for robotics and so on. So that's important. But sometimes I think the, the dialogue is also a little bit skewed by this, the fear factor. So there's a famous um, machine learning researcher, Andrew Ng, who says, you know, I'm afraid of robots taking over the world as much as I'm afraid of overpopulation on Mars. You know, so that to me puts it in perspective from one of the, you know, one of the greatest um, AI researchers around at the moment. The, the ultimate goal of the research that's being done here is really to enhance the, um, the state of our lives, to be honest. I mean, it's, that might sound a little bit altruistic, but I really think that's the, that's the case here. Um, we're trying to imagine what the future will be, and it's clear that this, these are the early directions of, of what our future will be with robots in the world.